Walt King, who has called this a great result, and he joins us from our Sydney studios. Thank you so much for joining us today. Walt, hope you're enjoying this Friday so far. Let's uh, talk about these great results. Unfortunately, the market not agreeing with you at this point, down 4% for your shares. So what do you think of the hit that your share price is taking at this point? A little harsh, don't you think? Well, I'm not, I don't control the market. I'm not sure what they, uh, they're thinking out in the market. But the results and the uh, forward momentum for the company is very strong and we're very confident about improving our result over time. If you look at our work levels, uh, you know, 12, 18 months ago to where they are today, 38.5 billion, and where they will be, the uncompleted work in June will somewhere in the region 40 to 42 billion. So I think it's a, it's a great story in terms of, uh, of results and position going forward. Yeah, apparently, though, while there's a lot of shorts uh, on your stock at this point, what do you think of that? Well, I've got no control over that. The market will do what it wants to do. Okay, well, we'll watch out for your uh, stock price then. Let's talk about, uh, I guess, uh, growth going forward, because you got a lot of contracts on board, which includes the building of the big uh, new subway tunnel here in Hong Kong for the MTR group. But how sustainable is this rebound in construction and mining? Well, the great story is in Asia and uh, resources and infrastructure and the great uh, advantage of the latent model, it has tremendous flexibility and is very responsive model. It can respond to new market opportunities. So the company is responding to great market opportunities in Hong Kong and Mongolia and India and that's what really drives the company forward in terms of opportunities. It's a very responsive model. Yeah, speaking of opportunities, Walla, you expect to sign a big Australian mining contract next week. Can I ask who this company will be with? Uh, no, I, you can't, can't disclose that yet, but it'll, it'll be a several <laughs> hundred million dollar contract. Okay, and with one of the mining giants in Australia, is that right? Yep. All right. Well, let's talk about China and then. Uh, I look forward to that uh, disclosure when you make it. Let's talk about China because uh, there are a lot of concerns that China might be moving towards another asset bubble. Um, as much as 50 percent of Beijing's commercial office space seems to be vacant at this point. So people are building, which is outstripping demand at this point. Now, you have projects in nearby uh, Mongolia, also here in Hong Kong. Does uh, those sort of figures make you concerned as to the spread of this? Well, there's likely to be short-term fluctuations and you have to say that the general attitude of the world is, is very tentative about recovery. And so I think the next 12 months will be in for a period of somewhat uncertainty. Uh, there may be some short-term difficulties, but the direction of the world is for growth over the next uh, 10 to 20 years and uh, Asia will be part of that growth story. Yeah, and what's the next big project here in the Asia Pack for you, Wall, besides that uh, mining contract that you're expecting to sign next week in Australia? Uh, well, we expect to have some uh, substantial awards in Hong Kong in the next uh, three or four weeks, a uh, billion Australian dollar projects, and we're also expecting to extend our mining work in Mongolia. Mm. And what about the uh, situation in Dubai, Wall? Because uh, your company says that Dubai has a significant uh, way to recover, right? So what is your latest steps to recover money that's owed to late in, in Dubai? Of course, so there was that risk of uh, default from that sovereignty. Well, Dubai is not the complete Middle East. It's part of the Middle East. And there's no question that Dubai has a number of issues uh, to deal with. Uh, but we're uh, confident that... Uh, all or most of the money that we we have uh, outstanding in Dubai will be recovered, but other places in the Middle East are quite strong. Abu Dhabi is quite strong. Qatar is quite strong. So Dubai will eventually work its way through the system, and uh, we believe that it, the Middle East has a great future based on energy. Yeah. Well, how much are you owed exactly by Dubai? Well, I mean, that's, that's not a, a, there's no simple answer, but it's not an overwhelming amount of money. It depends on the various clients. And I must say, though, over the last two or three months, money has started to flow again. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's in the realm of, say, hundreds of millions of dollars, or is it in the uh, tens of millions of dollars? Uh, well, I'm not speculating on that. I mean, there's, there's simple, it's not a simple answer in mm -hmm. terms of, but it's, it's easily manageable within the overall context of the company. Okay, and how much do you actually uh, expect to recover? 100%, maybe 50 or would some of that be written off? Well, there's sort of commercial sensitivities in, in all of this, and 
I mean, we're not writing anything off at this point in time, but I'm putting to you that it's manageable within the overall context of the company. And uh, people are saying, investors, uh, Wald, are saying that you're maybe a little bit too over-optimistic in terms of what's happening in Dubai at this point. So what do you say to those naysayers? Oh, well, it'll work its way through the system. And as 12 months ago, the world was coming to an end. It hasn't come to an end. And the world has a great future. There is no doubt from time to time there are short-term difficulties. And there has been some difficulties in Dubai. Uh, but in two or three years, when you look backwards, it'll pass through the system. Mm. And what about uh, other planets in the Middle East? You still have a 45% stake in the Al Habitor engineering company. Are you keeping that one or divesting? No, absolutely keeping it. It's a great company. Mm. And what makes it such a great company? Well, it is the largest construction company in the Middle East. It has a, a position, it's got the resources, it's got the staff. I mean, construction is about uh, assets and balance sheet and people, and uh, it's got a very, very highly trained workforce of engineers and supervisors, probably the best in the Middle East. So if there's work going to be done, that company will benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully it'll help your margins because uh, Leighton's margins are probably uh, one of the lowest uh, among your peers in the Asia pack. In fact, investors in your stock price have a big uh, issue and concern with this because you can't really raise it that much. Um, what do you think of uh, you know trying to lift these margins and um, what do you think when people have concerns about this particular data point? Well, I dispute the margin business. I mean, Leighton have produced for a very long period of time more than 30% return on shareholders' funds over a 20-year period. And most of our companies are produced, with the exception of our property company, uh, the companies are producing 25 30% on the money invested in them. I wouldn't call that a small margin. Yeah, so we're calling it 5% margin calls here. That's uh, small to investors, though, Wall. Well, they're looking at the return on sales and, I mean, that's one measure, but you also have to re look at the return on funds employed and the return on funds employed, you know, was really a great position and Leighton were the number one stock in Australia in the 90s and in the last three or four years it's been up there with the best of them. Uh, okay, what about uh, debt? Because uh, gearing is a bit of a concern these days, especially when uh, credit is tight and you have quite a bit of debt coming due, almost... Uh, $2 billion Australian dollars worth maturing over the next four years. Any plans to refinance this wall? Well, if you look at our balance sheet, if you take uh, the... It's geared to a level of 35%, which is a very comfortable level. And that gearing of 35%, you know, brings all of the off-balance sheet assets in operating leases on balance sheet. So 35% level gearing is very comfortable. Okay, well, thank you so much for dropping by today. Have a great weekend. That's Walking, the CEO of Leighton Holdings, joining us there from Sydney.